Elric began to feel an invisible connection between his soul and the imprint of original sin, which until now felt very far away, and he could even see Mephistopheles' past, the gap between the two gradually filled. The problem was that Elric only absorbed the demonic chi as usual but somehow this happened, although the sporadic scenes made it impossible for him to understand what the situation was in front of him, but it seemed like that was what Mephistopheles went through before being sealed. Elric watched everything from above, a little stunned to see Mephistopheles on a battlefield full of blood and corpses, and below there were still living demons and screaming violently that shook the heavens and earth. Even the corpses of the dead demons piled on top of each other dried up into a rocky outcrop at the feet of Mephistopheles, and the living demons continued to rush forward, seemingly dissatisfied with wanting to fight to the death with him. Mephistopheles, after observing the dragons below with arrogant eyes, began to act, he jumped off the ledge as gently as if he was walking in the air. After a few leisurely steps, Mephistopheles began to accelerate and rush forward like an arrow, in his hand, the sword with the imprint of original sin was shining brightly and threateningly, and the demonic chi spilled out like a mist that enveloped him. With a smirk full of contempt, Mephistopheles muttered curses at the demons beneath his feet, ignorant idiots, but it was strange that Elric felt as if there was a hint of bitterness hidden in those words besides arrogance. Immediately afterwards, Mephistopheles suddenly accelerated and changed the direction of movement, he rushed straight down from above with the tip of his sword tearing through the wind like a rocket falling from the sky, and in his eyes flashed a fierce red chi and demonic chi gushed out like a stream. In the blink of an eye, Mephistopheles landed, and as soon as the tip of the sword collided with the mainland, causing an earth-shattering explosion, the surrounding earth and rocks within fifty meters were all thrown up, and even the demons who were messing around were thrown away. The little demons could not withstand the terrible power of the explosion, a large number of them were crushed by the pressure, others who were near the center of the explosion were burned in an instant. After landing in a grand manner, Mephistopheles quickly unleashed a stormy sweep, swinging his sword incessantly across the air, the light of the sword flashing, bringing with it a terrifying burning chi. Every single slash that descended caused the little demons to be knocked away, they looked like insects helpless in the face of the storm, Mephistopheles constantly swung his arms and slashed one side after the other. The more he slashed, the more he roared, you think you can kill me with just that much strength, the little demons continued to fall like stubbles under the blades soaked in Mephistopheles' demonic chi. Elric couldn't help but shudder at Mephistopheles' bloody slaughter, even though he was a demon slayer, he was also stunned by his relentless slaughter, the little demons were like sheep in front of a tiger's mouth, and there was nothing they could do to resist except screaming. Elric involuntarily felt a sense of terror in his heart, he had forgotten about it for a moment because he had always acted like an evil spirit loitering near him, but this was the original appearance of Mephistopheles, the greatest and noblest demon king. Indeed, under Mephistopheles' hands, those demons, even though they were overwhelmingly numerous and larger, were still like straw scarecrows that were easily decapitated by him, and his appearance when he killed the demons who opposed him was also strangely noble. Moreover, I don't know why, but Elric had the feeling that he was feeling Mephistopheles' emotions, as if he was looking in the mirror but in the mirror was Mephistopheles and not himself, and the feeling was deeper than what could be seen. At this moment, Mephistopheles let out a strange laugh, it was a crisp laugh that resounded with pride, but Elric felt that deep inside that smile there was something pitiful. As if Mephistopheles didn't want this to happen, all this carnage and the bloody scene that was spreading at his feet was not his own will. He only acted like that simply because it was his destiny from birth, it was an instinct that had been ingrained in his veins that he could neither stop nor resist. The sinner commits sin as naturally as breathing, because even his life and breathing are sinful, sin is the cause of his birth, the fate he has to endure, and the responsibility he has to bear. That was why Mephistopheles was the lonely demon king known by the name of original sin, even though that status gave him power over all other demons, but in his heart he had never been happy with it. After wiping away the demons that had been under his feet like trampling ants, 
a dense stream of demonic chi flowed out of Mephistopheles' body and formed the appearance of a real demon with outstretched black wings and a face that no longer looked like a human. Mephistopheles' essence is revealed in the form of an illusion of a giant demon, the head of a wolf, the horns of a goat, the fangs of a wild boar, and the wings of a falcon, all of which are tinged with death chi, soaked in blood and demonic chi that makes anyone tremble. Instead of digging deeper into Mephistopheles' past scenes, Elric was suddenly awakened by a voice echoing in his head, What are you looking at? Mephistopheles' face behind the rage appeared right in front of him, he must have realized that Elric had just looked at his past. Very quickly Elric was pulled out of the imaginary space and gradually, reality returned, at the moment when the connection between Elric and Mephistopheles was no longer there, he began to feel a tingling in his brows. While Norris had fallen to the ground and completely escaped the demon's control, Elric slowly felt the fatigue in his body, his breathing became hurried, and his stomach rumbled as if he was about to vomit. Seeing Elric's brows pale while rubbing his chest several times because his stomach was boiling and wanting to reflux, Augustine immediately asked Han with a worried expression, Elric, what's wrong, are you feeling unwell? Herman and the others also seemed worried, Wondering if Elric was injured in the process of absorbing demons, Elric immediately waved his hand to reassure them with a wry smile, no, it's okay, it's just dizziness. Augustine didn't say a word and immediately used a warm magic, which helped Elric's tense body gradually relax, and only then could he breathe a sigh of relief and look at Velance and Norris, it seemed that in reality, not much time had passed. Elric also realized that it seemed that Mephistopheles also saw his memories, he immediately felt uncomfortable as if his soul had been dug up, he also understood why Mephistopheles was so angry, who likes his past to be revealed. Although he had calmed down, Elric was still very nervous, what the hell had happened, after Yu's seal absorbed that little demon, Mephistopheles' seal suddenly reacted without any warning. And then suddenly I was sucked into the seal of the original sin, Mephistopheles' memories suddenly appeared, when Elric was still swimming in a mess of thoughts, Mephistopheles grumbled, what could be the matter, your soul is now connected to me. Elric looked at Mephistopheles in shock again, huh, can you know what I think, I didn't put it into words, Mephistopheles is still grumpy and cold, I'm also in shock, I can't believe that I can form a bond between myself and a human even though I'm in my soul form. Elric frowned and urged Mephistopheles to stop that kind of ambiguous talk, do you know what's going on, if you know something, tell me properly. Mephistopheles was nauseous at the thought of having a soul connection with a lowly human, but there was still a mixture of anger on his face in response to Elric, I'm not a fool either, you know, but it seems like the demon you just absorbed. I can only guess that the demon's seal is of my lower form, Elric looked at his sealed arm in amazement, if that is the case, then everything seems to be more reasonable. A seal of the original sin but inferior, it looks like a wolf, its original form is somewhat similar to your original, but why didn't you recognize it in the first place, Elric asked while expressing doubt or squinting at Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles' wrinkled forehead showed no signs of straightening, but it was even more wrinkled with eyes behind the air, didn't I tell you before, I was born at the peak of the demons, so I never counted the inferiors. Elric regained seven parts of his mental stability and began to raise his voice again, are you sure it wasn't because there was no one playing with you, Mephistopheles became even more mad and clenched his fists cursingly, boy, this insolent brat. After making Mephistopheles mad, Elric was satisfied to change the subject, by the way, what do you see in my memory, do you see anything shameful, although Elric was laughing, he was actually a little worried in his heart, obviously not wanting to be humiliated by a demon. However, Mephistopheles just crossed his arms and turned away without saying anything, he did see Elric's past but even if it was something to poke at, it wasn't enough to be considered a weakness that could be used to intimidate him, so he chose to be silent. After being freed from the demons, Norris was taken to a convalescent bed, and Velance and Irina were always by his side with restlessness, even though Elric had confirmed that Norris' condition was now perfectly fine. Norris had just regained consciousness and searched for Elric's figure and hurriedly grabbed his hand with infinite appreciation, but because he was still weak, he could not sit up to thank him properly, 
and it was difficult for him to express his joy in words. Even so, Norris struggled to get up, a wet film lingering in the corner of his eye as choking words of thanks were uttered, thank you, thank you very much. Elric smiled warmly and grabbed Norris' old hand, he had lost a lot of energy, so he might feel weak for a while, but don't worry, as long as you focus on taking care of your health, you will be completely recovered, I will write a brief prescription, remember to take your medication regularly. Nora smiled with his eyes wet with emotion, I see, I have to take good care of myself so that I can see our king grow up again, right? After letting go of Norris's hand, Elric continued to keep his extremely benevolent and gentle smile, making everyone think that an angel had entered his body. However, inside Elric's thoughts, there was actually a little difference from that kind appearance, he silently glanced at Velance with expectant eyes, okay, I think it's time to receive the reward. Even Mephistopheles, who is a demon, can't respond to Elric's thoughts, you keep pretending to be very kind, you have done all noble and righteous things, but in fact, you have always been a pragmatic person, Elric clicked his tongue in his heart, no surprise, isn't it, we've always been like that, there's nothing wrong with being pragmatic, even among friends, you should get what you deserve. And please don't eavesdrop on other people's thoughts like that, you perverts, seeing Elric put on a disdainful appearance like a perverted girl, Mephistopheles grumbles even more irritated, as if I wanted to hear it so much. At that moment, Velance held out a wooden box with his small hand, and Elric's eyes widened as if in surprise, making Mephistopheles couldn't help but exclaim that he was a professional actor. Velance handed the box to Elric and explained, as I promised, this is the treasure map of the previous Tiger King and the research work of the strong body technique, I know very well that the benefactor does not want any money and attaches great importance to honor, but please accept it, this is my sincere heart. Elric politely replied and took the box, if you said that, then I am not as respectful as obeying orders, this thing belongs to the previous Tiger King. Elric nervously opened the lid of the wooden chest with eyes full of eagerness, he had to try hard not to reveal a ray of greed burning in his heart. Inside the chest was an old scroll of parchment paper and a thick booklet solemnly placed on a fine red silk sheet, looking at their appearance, it could be seen that they were ancient documents that had been stored very carefully. Elric wanted to scream with joy but couldn't hold back, both of these things were important things, but it didn't stop there, Velan suddenly instructed, please look at what was under the cloth again, Elric gently lifted the silk cloth and couldn't help but roll his eyes in surprise. This time he was really amazed because as soon as he turned the cloth over, a cold air burst out that made his fingertips tremble, underneath the cloth were a few palm-sized sprigs of herbs, Elric asked Velance in a daze, wait, isn't this a rare herb of the East, why did you give me such a precious thing, not because he didn't want to take it, but because accepting something outside of the agreement would lead to a burden on him as if he had received someone else's favor. Velance smiled and explained, it was a thousand years ago, this is an elixir passed down to the royal family, I give it to you because our beast men have a legend like this. A legend that when the world is on the verge of destruction, a heroic king who is capable of leading the beast men will come, it is said that the great man in the legend also learned physical strength, the words of thunder were inscribed by the royal family, when the royal family was in danger of perished, if there is a benefactor to help, that person is the hero of the prophecy. The prophecy speaks when a harsh winter blows and freezes the land, as well as people's hearts. That hero will appear and dispel the cold winter, so that the warm spring will once again bloom on this land, the verse in the prophecy that has been handed down to this day is just like that. After recounting that seemingly mysterious story, Velance put his hand on his chest and looked at Elric with eyes full of belief, I believe that you are the hero king mentioned in that legend and prophecy. For a moment, Elric felt as if he had just been hit hard in the back of his head to the point of being stunned, a particular word of thunder that came to his mind, winter, was it just a coincidence? Elric quickly realized that the ancestors had told him to go to this place for the mission of winter, so it was no coincidence that the word appeared in the prophecy or the instructions of the ancestors. When Elric thought about it, his grandfather had also told Norris forty years ago, I'm sorry for being late, and he began to speculate, if that was the case, it meant that everything was arranged by his family. 
Seeing that Elric was still hesitant, Velance smiled brightly and persuaded him, so, you deserve the elixir of the royal family, and at this time, Elric has no choice but to accept, okay, thank you. With a satisfied smile on Velance's lips, I will now guide everyone to the Temple of Flowers, and not long after, Elric and Velance's group got into the carriage and followed the path the boy had instructed, leaving the Anthromorph city. Meanwhile, at the Blood Wolf King's lair, Hugo was lucky enough to escape from the fierce battle that was kneeling on the ground with trembling wings hugging his body, although the Blood Wolf King didn't say a word, but just his breath made Hugo so scared that he wanted to lose his hair. Hugo bent down close to the ground with a crouched look that was constantly trembling, God, I'm sorry, Blood Wolf King, I won't fail again. Before he could finish his words, Hugo choked his throat because he felt the heat in the back of his head for a moment, which meant that his master was staring at him with murderous eyes. The Blood Wolf King didn't hesitate and didn't intend to listen to Hugo's explanation further, he immediately whipped his tail towards his neck, only to see a streak of bright red light wrapped around his neck while a voice was created by willpower, because you have failed. So I will take my tail back, and when I finished speaking, the Blood Wolf King angrily clenched his fists and slammed down on the throne, causing the whole base to shake violently. At the same time, the invisible tail that was tightly wrapped around Hugo's neck instantly tied up, cutting off his head in the blink of an eye, blood splattered all over his feathers before he even had time to scream. Then, there was a roar like boiling water that filled the heavy atmosphere inside the base, the Blood Wolf King muttered in a voice full of resentment, it was Melvinger, then and now, those born from that lineage continue to torture me persistently. Where have they gone, finishing their words, the Blood Wolf King's gaze turned to the distance, and within the darkness, a man obscured by the night slowly appeared. He was an antelope with a pale face and a white robe covering his body, the antelope bowed his head respectfully and reported to the Blood Wolf King, they were on their way to the Flower Temple. The Blood Wolf King immediately discovered Elric's intention, the Temple of Flowers, so he was following the path of his ancestors, huh, after thinking for a while about the nature of the temple, the flowers always catch fire very well, he immediately came up with an idea, burning them all. Burning them to death along with the temple, the antelope obeyed the order and immediately bowed his head and accepted the responsibility for carrying out this plan without saying another word. After that, the blood wolf king let out a sinister laugh, his laughter was so loud that there was enough room for hundreds of people to shake along, and loud cheers also came from the bloody subordinates at the same time. On the way through the black snow field, for some reason, Elric thought that the path he was going to take would be the same as the one his grandfather took forty years ago, there was no solid evidence, but his intuition told him so. No matter how gloomy and cold the outside space was, the inside of the carriage was still a warm space as large as a villa, and there were even two floors with private bedrooms for each person, the power of magic was indeed astonishing. Velance had been giving orders such as beast training since he saw Gility's white tiger, but no matter how hard he tried to show the majesty of the tiger king, the white tiger kept picking his nose indifferently, which made him irritated, so insolent, how dare you ignore the tiger king's orders. Just like that, the two tigers chased each other around, an interesting sight that made Sean laugh, it seemed that in this carriage only Velance and the white tiger were enjoying the journey like a trip without bothering about anything. After a while, Sean began to notice Elric standing in a corner talking to father and son Isabel, they whispered loudly to each other that made him curious. There were many rumors about Isabel's beauty, but now that he met Sean in person, he had to admit that she was really beautiful, looking at Elric and Isabel talking to Herman and smiling brightly, Sean was even more eager to deduce about their relationship, Herman also seemed to be very satisfied with Elric, made Sean even more curious about the story of the three of them. After that, Herman suddenly put his hand on the hilt of the sword with a cheerful smile, shouting, rubbing. Did he ever intend to learn swordsmanship, Elric couldn't help but be amazed at Herman's suggestion, although he was studying and trying to perfect his strength, but swordsmanship was in a completely different aspect. Elric doubted or raised his eyebrows and asked Herman again as if he didn't understand why he came up with this strange idea, swordsmanship, you haven't forgotten that I'm a magician. 
Herman sincerely spoke his thoughts, he was able to learn martial arts very quickly, and even improved his body strength, to put it bluntly, you are such a great genius, and I think swordsmanship will be very useful for your body strength, so. Elric thought carefully about Herman's idea, since he usually had a hobby of researching and learning all kinds of martial arts on the continent, so he was also very interested in swordsmanship, but he wasn't sure if the martial arts had any similarities with Herman's swordsmanship. Realizing Elric's concerns, Herman convinced him in a firm voice, I think swordsmanship will also be necessary when you use body enhancement techniques, or why don't you try to learn some basic moves from my swordsmanship? Just as Herman was about to say a few more words of persuasion with twinkling eyes, Augustine suddenly opened his mouth to interrupt their conversation in a voice as solid as a stone, don't be in such a hurry. Augustine didn't think he was paying attention, but it turned out that he had overheard Herman's conversation with Elric, and his eyes immediately lit up violently, and the air inside the carriage quickly heated up as if boiling steam was spreading from Augustine. The Blue Eagle Knights, sensing danger, stopped their conversation and turned back with the weapon in their hands, yes, there was something wrong, but Augustine's power continued to spread like a storm. At that moment, Gillity turned her eyes towards the Blue Falcon Knights and warned them, you should stand still, they were forced to stop in a state of tension because they didn't know what Gillity was going to do. Suddenly, a few insects crawled up to the throats of the Blue Falcon Knights, intuition told them that this was not easy, they cautiously glanced at the tiny bug on each other's necks and kept speculating. The bugs that had just landed began to puff up, making a slight rattling sound as if something was boiling inside it, on the other side, Gillity grinned and continued to say threatening words, just a wrong move. Your heads will explode, and you will finish speaking, and in Gillity's golden eyes there will be a terrifying aura, and at this moment he is extremely proud that he is a beast king who rules all beings in a grand way. Afterwards, Gillity and Augustine stood side by side creating a terrible pressure on the wagon, should we do that, the wind outside was howling so strongly, I don't think it would be a problem to bury the body. Even Velance, the Tiger King, was so frightened by Gillity's power that he ruffled his tail feathers, the boy's complexion turned white and hurriedly snuggled into Haza's lap in trembling, although she was not afraid of these two strange old men, but the pressure they exerted was indeed very heavy. Isabel was also worried about hiding behind her father, and Herman lowered her voice to advise Augustine and Gillity, please calm down, there are children here, and Herman motioned to his brothers not to be aggressive. Augustine and Gillity just looked at Herman with expressionless faces, they were angry because there was an unwritten rule between martial arts and wizards that had been competing for centuries, no matter how coveted a rare genius might be, if he was already on one side, the other side will never be able to touch that person, of course, there are some unusual rare cases, but everyone tends not to touch talents who have reached a certain level. Yet Herman was going to break this unwritten rule in front of Elric's master, which could be considered an insult and it was not uncommon to be beaten, but considering that causing chaos in the carriage could affect the children, Gillity finally ordered the bugs to retreat temporarily, and the Blue Falcon Knights could only breathe a sigh of relief. In the meantime, Elric was still silently immersed in the thought of Herman's proposal, after the tense atmosphere had temporarily subsided, Herman bowed to Augustine, my offer is not intended to rob you of your disciple, as I said, his disciple had a completely different fighting style from an ordinary magician, perhaps because he had taught him, or perhaps because of the Melvinger family tradition. But one thing is for sure, whether it's swordsmanship or body strengthening, if he continues to do it in this direction, he will probably make a big difference, isn't it, even though Herman said so, this persuasion didn't work, Augustine's eyes were still bright, it sounds reasonable, but. Don't you think I don't recognize your cunning, and immediately afterwards, a huge wave of energy surged from Augustine's bright eyes, and he had no faith in Herman even if Herman was the famous great blue lion of integrity. No matter how polite Herman was, he was still basically a lion, a wild and ferocious lion, and at the moment when he was about to be tamed, the lion who couldn't help but reveal the nature of a ferocious beast, he roared with fierce anger, oh, I've heard rumors that old people are often afraid of the east and the west, and you're afraid that I'm going to rob your students. At this moment, 
Carl was still calmly driving the carriage without knowing what chaos was going on inside. Then, suddenly, a carriage door was broken, and a tremendous stream of energy burst out like a broken water pipe, causing the two horses to panic, if it weren't for Carl, who was better at driving than humans, the whole car would have been overturned. Augustine and Hermann jumped out together and a fierce battle began, Augustine aggressively following Hermann and constantly waving his magic with a lifeless expression, while Hermann stepped back to keep a safe distance. Although Augustine was old, his fighting power was extraordinarily superior to that of a handsome young man, and he swung his arms at Hermann and grumbled, the damn bastard. Today I will tame you from a lion to a kitten, and soon afterwards, the arm of the dark elf implanted into Augustine's right arm glows and then turns black again, its size becomes huge, swooping down on Hermann as if it were beating a mosquito. Hermann inhaled a breath of accumulated energy into his blade, which was a mandatory restriction because his body had not yet fully recovered from that monstrous disease, but his attitude was still extremely relaxed and laughing. It was a narrow-minded old man, when Hermann gathered enough energy and opened his eyes, his eyes lit up with an aggressive aura like a lion entering into a territorial competition. Immediately afterwards, a bright light flashed from Hermann's blade, the sword chi emitting terrifying power collided with the magic hand that Augustine had created, even though that magic hand was only created with invisible energy but was as hard as stone. Hermann did not give up and tried to dig deep into the middle of the magic palm with his sharp blade, as a result of which after a fierce struggle, his blade split the other magic hand in half and escaped danger. On the other side, the clash between Gility and the Blue Falcon Knights was also taking place, Gility riding on the back of the White Tiger slowly walking towards the Blue Falcon Knights as they raised their swords with threatening gazes. Gility's bright yellow eyes lit up again when he let go of the opponent's taunt, the Blue Eagle Army, maybe I have to tame you too, the White Tiger under Gility's command also roared softly, raising its fangs and claws with great vigor. The Blue Eagle Knights naturally couldn't stand Gility's insult, they all raised their weapons and jumped towards Gility to attack, hmm, monster hunting is our job, you don't know. A riot spread in all directions, the ground shook violently, the whole area was plunged into chaos after the bombardment of the Eastern General, between the resonance of the sound of argument and the rumbling explosion, Carl was sitting in the driver's seat and could only look at them with his mouth open. Mephistopheles shook his head when he looked at the scene of the chaos that was happening, I don't know why they had to fight each other for you, it was chaotic, in fact, in the history of mankind, there were very few cases of masters competing for disciples, because they would usually live introvertedly. A brazen answer immediately flowed out of Elric's mouth as he tossed his hair in a cool pose, I know how, because I'm so extraordinary, it makes me tired, but Mephistopheles almost vomited when he heard those horrible things, he looked at Elric with a disgusted expression, but he didn't care at all. Seeing that Elric used sound transmission to speak instead of conveying through thoughts, Mephistopheles narrowed his eyes incomprehensible, you use sound transmission again, Elric clicked his tongue and replied, isn't it a little disgusting to read other people's thoughts on your own, Mephistopheles nodded, I agree with you on this point, Elric shrugged casually, then let's continue like this, in fact, both of us feel inconvenient when no matter what we are thinking, the other party knows it. Right away, fortunately, now both of us are used to the new link, so we can control the connection of thoughts with each other, they will only connect thoughts when necessary. While Elric and Mephistopheles reached a peaceful agreement, the argument between Augustine and Hermann became even more intense, Elric is my student, don't try to drag him anymore, the old man is about to go down the hole, why are you getting more and more selfish, Mephistopheles sighed when he heard the cursing, do you just let them fight like that, watching the two old men fighting is starting to give chills. Elric had been thinking for a long time about what to do with Hermann's suggestion and he finally came to his decision, immediately using his magic to create pressure to intervene in the chaotic battlefield between Gility and the Blue Falcon Knights. Of course, both Augustine and Hermann felt the pressure that Elric created, they immediately stopped because they knew that he had something to say, Elric first tried to calm everyone's tense mood, everyone should calm down. When everyone nervously turned their eyes to Elric, he decisively said to Augustine and Gility, 
I'm going to learn swordsmanship, Elric did it because after being sucked into the original Sin Seal last time, he realized that he was almost squeezed out, if he wanted to go further in the journey to conquer this seal, his body was clogged, his magic was an obstacle. He thought that his body was not strong enough to contain the seal of the original sin, so he decided to learn swordsmanship. Of course, Elric's decision shocked his two teachers, although somewhat disappointed, Augustine and Gillity sat down and listened calmly to the reason why their students demanded such an abrupt turn. Facing Elric's fierce gaze, Augustine and Gillity both felt a crisis, why, we still have a lot to teach you, that's right, I still have more powerful tricks to teach you. Elric began to convince the two teachers, I want to learn, because I want to become even stronger, because of the family tradition, I will have to keep fighting the devil, and I think it would be better if I knew the different methods of attacking. Moreover, I have realized that the foundation of martial arts is martial arts, in order to grasp it more clearly, I think I have to dig deep into the foundation of martial arts, and swordsmanship is also a very good link to martial arts, isn't it? Elric finished speaking, and was silent for a moment for Augustine and Gillity to think. Hearing Elric's words, Augustine and Gillity's expressions softened slightly, and he emphasized, of course, that doesn't mean that you will forget your role, you only use martial arts as a means of supporting magic. Herman nodded as if it was obvious, I never said I would bring him into the world of swordsmanship and neglect magic, I simply wanted to help him a little. After saying his reasoning, Elric played the last card that hit Augustine and Gillity's feelings, I won't learn swordsmanship if you don't agree, because after all, I'm still your disciple. Sure enough, the emotional trick always worked well with cold and hot outsiders like Augustine and Gillity, they looked at each other, silently exchanged glances, and quickly nodded in agreement with Elric's point of view. Augustine and Gillity said to Elric one after another, then we have no reason to refuse this offer, after all, you were the head of Melvinger's house before you were our student, after fighting them, I can see that there are many things that you can learn from them, Elric smiled appreciatively, thanking the two teachers. After reaching an important agreement, Augustine and Herman's eyes collided without an appointment, which of course were not friendly eyes. Although the two of them are smiling and talking very gently on the outside, please take good care of the boy, rest assured, I will teach him with all my heart. Behind it, however, was a silent rivalry, Herman gloated, old man, it looks like I've won, and Augustine is sarcastic, I'll let you win this one time, kitten. Although Elric felt quite guilty of his two masters, he knew that this was a once-in-a-thousand-year opportunity, not to be missed, because the Blue Lion was one of the strongest swordsmen on the mainland, even if he hadn't fully recovered, he would still have a lot for him to learn. Thinking of being able to make good use of this opportunity, Elric silently smiled sinisterly, I would have to suck everything useful out of him. From then on, Elric began to listen to Herman lecture on the basics of martial arts whenever he had free time, and after grasping the basic theory, he began to practice, but after only half a day of practicing martial arts without using martial arts, he had become a person who had been sucked out of his vitality to the point of vomiting into the rainbow. Elric knelt on the ground on all fours with his brows furrowed, he might die at this momentum, Mephistopheles beside him couldn't help but gloat and mock his weak body. Seeing Elric swaying as if he was about to faint, Herman could still laugh and tease, well, I didn't expect your physical strength to be so weak, I guess it's probably because you were born with an inclination to be a magician. Elric struggled to get up and complain about Herman's way of teaching, could he say anything more reasonable, what ordinary person could swing his sword ten thousand times a day without using any mana, and he had to have a good posture. In short, Herman's instructions had failed in the first place because the magician's endurance couldn't handle the request, but he was still unaware of it and laughed carelessly and said, that's what every child in my clan has to do as soon as they are toddlers. Immediately, Mephistopheles' eyes sparkled, Elric, I've already decided, Elric was frustrated in his body and grumbled, what? Mephistopheles gloated when he saw that Elric had eaten the onion, so he began to speak in moderation, on the day that I come back and rule this land, I will treat the blue lion with special kindness, I will let them sit at the right hand of my throne. 
The consequence of Elric's provocation was a seductive dance, Mephistopheles immediately put on a ballet costume glittering with pomegranate needles, a sight that made him instantly stunned as soon as he looked at it. Mephistopheles was ordered like a puppet, wearing a ballet that swirled in the air, and could do nothing but resist with his mouth, stop this game, bastard, Elric casually watched Mephistopheles' nimble dance and sneered, for you insolence, ha. Huh. At this moment, after about three days of leaving Anthromorph City, the carriage stopped at the gate of the Temple of Flowers, but the scene on the ground outside the temple did not feel as beautiful as expected. Carl quickly opened the car door and announced to Elric, Uncle Elric, we've arrived. Elric jumped out of the carriage in an excited mood, and finally arrived at the Temple of Flowers. However, his eager footsteps stopped when he saw the place known as the Beautiful Flower Temple in legend. Elric and everyone in the party opened their eyes wide in shock, what, this is a flower temple, it doesn't look like a temple at all, and. Where were the flowers, Elric was stunned for a moment when he looked at the temple with only ruined marble columns left, everywhere there was only ruin and gloom, not the slightest resemblance to the flower temple in his imagination. Seeing Elric's stunned expression, Velance immediately stepped forward and led the way with a reassuring smile, now that it's temporarily blocked because of the Eastern General's rage, I've told them that we're coming, so the temple door will be opened soon. Mephistopheles stood still with his arms crossed, staring at the ruined temple and giggling, they called this place the Temple of Flowers, so I wondered if it was really the place I was thinking about, and it was still here, Elric asked, what do you mean? Mephistopheles took a deep look at the temple in front of him and explained that this place was born for the end of the world in case the world was destroyed, something like Noah's Ark. Mephistopheles said in a nostalgic voice, at that time, humans, dragons, giants, even those you call the old gods, this place was built to prepare for the future of those who are afraid of the great army of the demon lord, they will try to germinate new seeds in this land even after the world are destroyed. After looking at it in disgust, Mephistopheles clicked his tongue and added, Of course, Melvinger had stopped that great army, but Elric did not hear any more words from Mephistopheles and began to sink into his worries. For a moment, Elric remembered the scene he had seen in his dream when he first unlocked the power of the clan ring, wondering if the destruction that Mephistopheles was talking about really meant what he had seen in his dream. Faint blurry images flashed in Elric's mind, tearing the sky, tearing the land, the sea, the image of a man fighting against the demons who came to sweep the human race, a man who could control dragons and giants at will. At this moment, the slight vibrations on the ground pulled Elric back to reality, he could feel something moving deep in the ground like a grizzly bear waking up from a long hibernation. The tremors grew stronger and stronger, and Elric opened his eyes wide in surprise and looked down at his feet, thinking that perhaps the ground would crack to reveal some secret path below. However, Velance's excited shouts shattered Elric's speculation, and he pointed to the ruined temple gate, where only the broken stone pillars remained, and wagging his tail excitedly, Elric, look. The door was open, in the middle of the dome of the temple, the gloomy fog was stretched like threads that were about to break and tangle and begin to form a colorful vortex, a huge door was created starting from the center of the dome, it sounded like the stone door that had long been closed was violently opened with a creaking sound. A pure white aura and patches of mist that changed color like seven colors of a rainbow also spilled in the direction where everyone was standing at the same time, Elric was stunned by the beautiful scene, not expecting that the black snow field could be adorned with such a brilliant light. Mephistopheles narrowed his eyes and glanced at Elric, then turned his gaze towards the temple again, a cunning smile appeared on his lips, perhaps there were familiar faces in this, it would be very interesting then. Finally, the process of opening the gate was complete, the dome door in front of them was only filled with dazzling white, but they couldn't take the initiative to enter the inside, but had to wait a little longer, after all, this temple was guarded, so it would be a rude act to directly break in. From inside the temple gate, a woman in a white robe slowly walked out, she was a person with a small stature of only one meter five and was skinny in height, she wore a hood so it was difficult to see her face right away but the overall first impression seemed quite cute. The woman walked out slowly, the more mysterious she looked, 
The more curious Elric felt, the damn curious nature that ate into the blood of every magician made him even more excited. Finally, the girl appeared with her eyes closed and a slight nod to greet the group of strangers, and it was a pleasure to meet you, I am the ruler of the Flower Temple, and my name is Hunyatraquaz. It's hard to pronounce, so you can just call me a nail, and when she finished speaking, the girl calmly opened her eyes, which were different from the eyes of ordinary people, because she had mossy green erect pupils like the eyes of a reptile. Velance waved her little fluffy front paw in response to Hunyatraqua's greeting, she just smiled and nodded slightly, and then continued, It's very cold and dark outside, please come in first. After Hunyatraqua's turned around and quietly walked inside the door, Velance and Elric looked at each other and nodded to invite the other in first. Giving in with his eyes for a moment, Velance decided to step in first while Elric followed the boy closely, Elric thought that after all, Velance was a member of the Tiger King's family who had been protecting this land for a long time, so he couldn't surpass the boy even in the smallest details. Elric and his group all followed Hunyatraquas into the door that was emitting a dazzling light, because the white light was blurry, so they couldn't see what scene awaited them behind the door, whether it was a ruined scene like the outside. Fortunately, the scene behind the gate was in stark contrast to the outside, a terrain with many small hills scattered along a vast plain, cold winds were blowing but grass and wildflowers were still blooming on the hillside. In the middle of the plain there is a tall and pointed marble building, the temple pillars are carved with all kinds of flowers, it seems that the place is actually a literal temple of flowers, Hunyatraquas led people towards the temple and continued to chat, usually, this place is full of flowers and the warm wind blows through, but recently, when winter comes, the temple has begun to hibernate. The temple's rule is not to receive guests during hibernation, even priests who have gone out are forbidden to return to the temple, but this time we opened the door at the earnest request of the Tiger King, who has supported our temple for a long time, Hinyatraquas said as he glanced at Velance with indifferent eyes, neither hot nor cold. She continued to instruct in a not very friendly voice like her cold expression, during this time, a lot of gods are fast asleep, please note that any activity that interrupts hibernation is forbidden, of course, not all flowers fall in winter, so you will still be able to see some fairies from time to time, please behave politely, at that moment, there was a small voice that made Elric stop, human, human. Too many people, I haven't seen a human in forty years, so excited, Elric tilted his head in surprise to look at the girl who had just appeared, perhaps her body was only as big as the palm of his hand, a very small fairy with wings as thin as a dragonfly and a bright voice. Hunyatraquas then introduced the fairy to everyone, this was Daffo, the god of daffodils, Elric was even more astonished when he heard it, her eyes widened even more in amazement, she was not a fairy, but a god, was it really a god? The first person Daffo approached was Hayes, the goddess flew around her and cheered, the young lady was beautiful, very beautiful, Hayes immediately smiled brightly in response, oh my god, thank you, you are also very beautiful. Daffo moved his wings and flew back and forth between the group of people and expressed his impression on each of them, for Augustine was a reproach, a monster, a monster, an old, gloomy monster, Augustine immediately laughed and retorted, shouting, I feel a little absurd when a person who has lived for more than a thousand years would go and say that I am old. Daffo didn't retort, but swung over to Herman to continue to criticize, lion, lion fat, too heavy, then she left the lion standing dumbfounded and flew towards his daughter, unrequited love, had to work harder, so pretty, the most fragrant, Isabel was embarrassed but still politely bowed to Daffo, thank you. Daffo continued to comment on both Sean and the Blue Falcon Knights, seeing her busy chatting non-stop like a parrot drunkenly practicing to speak, Elric glanced at her a little uncomfortably, what the hell was so noisy. Afterwards, Daffo went to Elric to assess him, but as soon as she approached him, she frowned and covered her nose, seemingly annoyed by the scent emanating from him. But even more strange was that Daffo flew past Elric's face and pointed to the space in front of him, terrifying, dark, stinky, so many distractions, Elric was waiting for an evaluation in his heart to open his eyes wide when the person Daffo was looking at was not him, next to him, Mephistopheles was responding to Daffo's disparagement, whoa, who's this? 
A familiar face, a pumpkin flower, well, no, or a gardenia, so ugly that I couldn't tell what it was, and Elric couldn't help but be startled because he never thought that anyone else would see Mephistopheles, and it was obvious that they knew each other, moreover, there is a not very good relationship. After that, a heated argument broke out between Daffo and Mephistopheles, I am the god of daffodils, daffodils, I am not bad, the other lady also complimented me on being beautiful, oh, you really believe that you are beautiful because of the compliments of a human, are you a god, tight. Daffo was so irritated by Mephistopheles that he kicked the air and shouted, but in the meantime, no one found out about Mephistopheles, not even Augustine, Gillity, and Hermann being the most sensitive, however, Elric couldn't help but worry about the reaction of the rest of the group because he couldn't see Mephistopheles. Sure enough, Augustine, Gillity, and Hermann had begun to feel skeptical, what was the Narcissus god doing, what was there, why was she acting like that to the air, because in their eyes, Daffo seemed to be making a fuss with the void. Everyone looked around looking for clues, only Hunyatraquas was still extremely casual in explaining, Daffo doesn't have many friends so she often plays alone, maybe she's playing role-playing as if she has an invisible friend and is fighting with that person. Hearing this, everyone nodded their heads in sympathy for Daffo, and Elric could breathe a sigh of relief. Seeing that everyone was looking at him with sad eyes, Daffo immediately corrected, I'm not alone, mean nail, but Hunyatraquas ignored the poor fairy and asked Elric, why did you come to our temple? All eyes fell on Elric, thinking that the moment to complete the task had finally come, he nervously swallowed his saliva and took out the ice egg that had always been stored in his body. When Elric took out the ice egg, it immediately emitted a cold light, he handed it towards Hunyatraquas and explained, I want to give this to the god of Camellias, then, Hunyatraquas went into the temple first, telling the gods what Elric wanted to do, meanwhile, Elric and his group were taken to a room at the back of the temple so that they could rest. Shortly afterwards, the god summoned Elric to the temple, so he was quietly led away by Hunyatraquas with no companion other than Mephistopheles, Inside the temple there was nothing special, long corridors, which were worth seeing for visitors and devotees, only carries a gloomy atmosphere. Looking at the stunted vines on the wall and not feeling the scent of flowers anywhere, Elric silently lamented to Mephistopheles, the temple must have suffered a lot of damage caused by the eastern general, and I thought it must be a fairy tale paradise. Mephistopheles sighed, the boat was created to prepare for the destruction that the demon lord was trying to bring, and yet it was helpless before a mediocre winter, there could be such an absurdity, I have already said, the eastern general is something I have never seen in my time, at that time, there was indeed a snowy field, but it was not such a gloomy place. It must be admitted that the eastern general had done something remarkable, Elric immediately asked, so why could the eastern general be so raging in the past time? Mephistopheles shrugged his tongue, I don't know that, maybe it's just a cyclical change as those beast men say, and if not, maybe someone is trying to fix the world to his liking, didn't those beast men think that Huniatraquas or something was going to rage again, or? Speaking of this, Mephistopheles paused, his eyes lit up sharply and glanced at Elric, maybe this is related to your family's arrangement or something, isn't it all too coincidental? Everything seemed to be waiting for your arrival, from the first time you came to the north, it made me wonder if your cunning ancestor might have plotted this, Elric heard this and opened his eyes in shock. Elric quickly determined that Mephistopheles' guess was correct, because Otto was the representative of winter, which he had previously mentioned about some kind of arrangement, if so, it would be even more complicated than imagined, but Elric had no more clues, so he could only put the matter aside for the time being. At this moment, when he reached the center of the temple, Hunyatraquas walked up to a large stone door and pushed it open, we have arrived, Elric curiously squinted his eyes inside before entering with her, the space seemed gloomy and there was no fragrance of flowers even though this place was already the center of the temple. Inside the room, hundreds of tables and chairs were arranged in a spiral shape, which looked majestic, but there were only a few people sitting in this large temple, perhaps this place would normally accommodate up to several hundred people the weak presence of the gods made people feel like a dying flower garden. Obviously there was a problem, but Elric was distracted when the flower gods kept asking the question, 
who are you, why are you here? What's wrong with you looking for camellias, why do you want to give her the ice crystal ball, the flower gods outside of Daffo all asked Elric as if he was very suspicious. Of course Elric knew how to answer them, but the problem was that there was no tea god here, which meant that something might have happened to her, was it the same as what happened to the other flower gods who were absent? Anyway, Elric had to introduce himself before answering the questions of the gods, so he solemnly put his hands on his chest and proclaimed, I'm Elric Melvinger. Immediately there seemed to be a faint floral scent as the excited flower gods flew towards Elric, Melvinger, the blue-eyed blonde, we are friends, and, how many years, after a thousand years, idiot, forty years, yes, Uston, that's right, but why are you here, you came to keep your promise. Elric wondered what the promise was, but before he wanted to reconfirm with the gods, did my grandfather ever come here, the gods kept smiling brightly, yes, he used to visit this place, Uston is our friend, so, why did you come here? Elric immediately took out the ice egg and explained, I came because my ancestors told me to give her the ice crystal ball, can I know where the camellia god is? In an instant, the scent of flowers disappeared as if it was truly reflecting the emotions of the gods, the atmosphere also calmed down, everyone hesitated to bow their heads, that's it, camellias. Afterwards, the flower gods took Elric to another room located in a place with more windows so that sunlight could flood the room, however, a place that looked like a greenhouse, but it was full of small chests that looked like a cemetery with a series of neatly arranged coffins. Elric felt his mind go blank for a moment when he realized that maybe these were indeed coffins, and as he was walking, he stopped in shock when he saw a name he was looking for engraved on a coffin lid. The flower gods also stopped to look at the coffin with Camellia's name on it and said silently, the Camellia has withered, Elric was stunned and aching in his head, if this was true then this would be a big deal, Otto had said that if Elric handed over the ice crystal to the Camellia god, a second arrangement would be opened, but if she was already dead then the deal could not be made, he had come all the way here for that purpose and could not have succeeded. Elric couldn't help but impatiently ask the gods, it was because of the eastern general, the flower gods replied sadly, yes, it has existed for too long, every time the eastern general came, the sky was covered, there was not even rain, the wind was cold, even the ground was frozen, flowers do not bloom on arid and rotten soil, winters are prolonged, cold, hungry, the sun does not shine here. Spring is not coming, summer is closed, autumn is over, so everything is withering, not only the camellia, everyone is the same, the rest of the winter flowers are becoming like this, we will be the same soon, Elric couldn't help but collapse and sit down next to Camellia's coffin. For the first time on this long journey, Elric felt so helpless, he trembled bitterly and frustrated, if I couldn't give the ice crystal to the tea flower god, then it would be useless to come here this time, if that was the case, I wouldn't be able to rebuild the clan either. While Elric was biting his lip in agony and not willing to give up, Mephistopheles interjected in a few mockery, I couldn't believe that these self-proclaimed gods could wither just because of such a mediocre winter, what a pathetic winter. The flower gods, seeing Mephistopheles' unpleasant gesture, couldn't help but shout angrily, Demon King, shut up, this is not the place for you, we only let you in here because of our friends, we don't want to see you at all. Mephistopheles roared at the flower gods in a very indignant tone, you are nothing compared to me, how dare you, the flower gods also have sharp tongues to mock him, come on, come on, talk about the past, begging for the past, useless, really useless, when Elric was depressed, suddenly, something flashed in his mind. Elric risked opening the lid of Camellia's coffin with the thought, the gods don't say that death comes, they just say that the Camellia has withered, a withered flower does not necessarily mean that it will die, because the flower is only a part of the tree, perhaps the gods of the withered flowers have left the seed. When Elric opened the lid of the coffin, there was indeed a seed inside, that's right, the flower doesn't bloom continuously, after winter comes, just like a spring flower will hibernate and wait, and then it will germinate and bloom when spring comes again, so the seed of the withered flower gods remains, it's just that they lack the conditions to promote the flowering process. Elric carefully placed the ice crystal stone next to the camellia's seed, 
as Mephistopheles had explained before, the ice crystal was the core of winter, formed only from the depths of the snowy mountains covered in perpetual snow, or in other words, it was a divine egg, because camellias are a flower that blooms in winter, there is no better flower pot than ice crystals. But just putting them next to each other like this was useless, and it was not possible to punch out the ice crystal and insert the seed inside, Elric decided to promote the reaction between the seed and the ice crystal with the power of magic. As soon as he reached out to the seed, Elric recited the absorption spell and an incredible change took place immediately, the ice crystal that was emitting a faint light suddenly became bright. Immediately afterwards, white frost flowed from the ice crystals to the camellia seeds, and at the same time, black magic flowed back from the seeds to the ice crystals, and the light surrounding them spread more and more. Gradually, the light of the ice crystal attracted to the camellia seed began to fade, but in return, the light of the seed spread more strongly, and it also emitted a strong floral scent. The flower gods were overwhelmed by the bright light emitted by the camellia seeds, so they stopped arguing meaninglessly with Mephistopheles, they and Elric both watched the seeds nervously without blinking, the camellia seeds that had been frozen for a long time by the cold of the eastern general finally gradually thawed. After sucking out all the essence of the ice crystal and pushing the chi welding inside him to the ice crystal, the camellia seeds suddenly cracked, Elric was overjoyed because it seemed that his judgment was correct. Soon, strong and strong sprouts can be seen rising from the cracks, the sprouts are getting bigger and bigger, as the stem thickens and the leaves grow in a moment, it has become a small seedling and it is time to flower. The camellia buds had just opened their wings, and its bright red scent spread everywhere, so that the greenhouse was filled with the scent of camellias, and at the same time, a huge stream of power was released. The camellia god appeared in her most vibrant colors and hovered over the coffins, she slowly opened her eyes as if she had just woken up from a deep sleep, her fragrance making Elric momentarily astonished. Camellia wore a bright red dress that was as soft as camellia petals at her best, she looked around, wondering how she could open her eyes again, but as soon as she saw a face that was exactly the same as the one she had met forty years ago, she quickly understood the situation. Camellia flapped her pale red dragonfly wings and aimed to talk to Elric, who had arrived, as promised, melving her. Camellia is indeed a beauty among flowers, she has a very mature voice, unlike other flower gods who have childlike voices, her smile after completely shaking off the echoes of dreamy sleep makes her look somewhat cold and provocative. 